We're fixed. You are a fix it type guy, Aiden. We on? What the heck? This is black and what? This is awful. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from Fireman's Park in Columbus. Daily Dodge TV proudly presents WIAA playoff football. Tonight, it's a level one matchup in Division Five as the Broadhead Judah Cardinals are in town to take on the Columbus Cardinals. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you at the football field. I'm joined by my good friend and partner, Tim Haldeman. Aiden Voigt is our videographer and engineer. We welcome you into this broadcast, which is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement and Columbus Family Dental. Tonight's game also brought to you by Prairie Ridge Health, American Packaging Corporation, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, The Dump in Cambria, and White Construction. Welcome into our pregame show, everybody. Here we go, second season getting underway tonight. Broadhead Judah, a six seed. They come into this one with a six and three mark, and they were fourth place finishers in the SWC conference this season. Meanwhile, the third seeded Columbus Cardinals, of course, they are the defending Division Four state champions, but this year they drop down to Division Five, and they come in with an eight and one record. Of course, they were runners up in the Capital Conference this season. Should be a, a great game tonight, Tim Haldeman. And uh, boy, if uh, if this October slash November is anything like it was last year uh, for Columbus, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, one at a time. Yeah, a uh, carbon copy of last year, Mike, with the uh, state finals uh, championship at Camp Randall Stadium in the snow would be uh, an added benefit to say the least. And uh, Columbus, of course, a storied uh, program. Broadhead Judah as well. And uh, Mike, um, you know, one of the things you mentioned to me when I first got here this evening is that they have switched to the Southwest Athletic Conference. Is that a couple years ago? Yeah, yeah which, uh, you know, they've been in the Rock Valley forever and ever and ever right. and been a power in the Rock Valley. I go back to the uh, mid-90s. Uh, I can remember this is, you know, BT. Before Tronson, all right? Uh, <laughs> that's sort of like the Ice Ages, uh, practically. But I can remember a trip down to uh, Broadhead and uh, Columbus coming out the loser in that game. That was back in the, uh, like I say, the early, uh, mid-90s, roughly speaking, maybe uh, 94, 95, if I had to guess, uh, just prior to the 96 championship season. So, uh, yeah, a couple of storied programs. Uh, Broadhead and, and Judah High Schools have been together for many, many years. Judah, I think their uh, school population is less than 100. And, uh, and Broadhead, with uh, they've always had good uh, athletic programs down there. So, um, yeah, should be a good one. I, th I think Columbus, Mike, uh, it, it's going to be interesting how this all shakes out. Uh, of course, Columbus, is, as you mentioned, the three seed. Prairie Sheen got the two seed. And uh, I, I think uh, Columbus is not uh, real uh, happy with that seed. Uh, I'm sure that's not going to be their, uh, their calling card, if you will, but uh, especially tonight because, you know, you've got to win this one as you, it's one at a time, as they say. But uh, next week, if they were to match up against Prairie du Chien, Columbus is going to have to travel to Prairie du Chien. They're not going to be real thrilled about that. And uh, the records uh, may even indicate something different, but, hey, that's the way things shook out. We have the possibility tonight of witnessing history. Columbus running back Colton Brunel is closing in on the record for most rushing yards in a high school career in the state of Wisconsin. Colton has 6,750 career rushing yards entering tonight's game. He is 182 yards away from the record currently held by Tyler Tenner from Racine Lutheran, 
Uh, he finished his career with 6,932 rushing yards. So Brunel needs 182 yards tonight to tie that record. 183 yards, and he is your new career rushing leader in Wisconsin high school football. Oh, by the way, his season average, 181 yards <laughs> a game. That, so, puts a, that puts a lot of pressure that, on well, me, Mike. It, it does. Because I'm a statistician here, Bob. You've got to keep me posted because <laughs> we want to be ready if that happens, and we hope it does. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not only a remarkable testament to Colton Brunel, but it's also a testament to how good the line has been for the last couple of years. And consider this. In his freshman year, he wasn't even the main running back because his brother was. And that was also a COVID year where they played in the spring. There were fewer games. Absolutely remarkable what this kid has done. Oh, Mike, uh, to say the least. Uh, and uh, I don't care what kind of uh, adjectives you can put in front of Colton Brunel and his entire storied career here at Columbus. But, uh, I mean, he's going to hold the school record for uh, – <laughs> who knows, maybe forever, uh, for sure, as long as uh, you and I are doing broadcasts in this neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, fun. It's been fun to be a very, very small part of the program, to, uh, to bring him to the folks uh, back home that aren't able to come and watch him live. It's our honor, very honestly. You don't get this very often in a, uh, a community of this size, Mike, and, and uh, Columbus uh, should be very, very uh, pleased and proud of, of this young man, and, and it's not just his athletic prowess either. He's just a good kid, all right, all the way around, and he's a good teammate. Um, and I guarantee you there has been a, a number of times when, very honestly, he would have enjoyed sitting out a game, but he didn't want to do that for his teammates. That's just his, his style, and uh, he knows that he's the best player out there in the field, and he's going to go and prove it each and every time out there he puts his cleats on. Well, obviously, the main focus is, if you're well, for either of these teams, is to win a football game and to go to level two. But that is a big, big sidebar tonight that we will definitely keep an eye on as this evening progresses. Uh, and again, 182 yards to tie the record. 183 would break it. And that's right up his alley as far as his uh, season average goes. Uh, the Broadhead Judah team, they will be receiving the opening kickoff tonight. Columbus won the coin flip a few moments ago. They deferred their choice. And so Broadhead Judah will get the football first. Let's give you the offensive starters for Broadhead Judah. And they're coached by Jim Matthias. This is his 27th year of coaching football. 17 is the head coach. He was also an assistant for 10 years. The quarterback is Gabe Bakup, a junior, 5'9", 165-pound junior. Running backs include Isaac Saunders, a 5'7", 162-pound senior. Brody Reese, a 6'2", 180-pound junior. And Marcus McIntyre, a senior at 5'6", 150. The tight end is David Maslowski, 5'11", 215 pounds and a junior. At split end is Gunnar Bagley, 6'2", 195 and a senior. Looking at the line, the offensive tackles are Braden Sweeney, 6'3", 210 and a junior, along with Owen Hillstrom, a 6'1", 225 pound senior. The guards are Chase Wilhite, 5'10", 210 pound junior, along with Charlie Weiss, a senior at 5'9", 180. At center is Emmett Allen, a 5'11", 230-pound senior. So those are the offensive starters for Broadhead Judah. Meanwhile, let's give you the defensive starters for Columbus, coached by Andy Selgrad, defending Division IV state champions. And the safeties include Brady Link, a senior at 5'9", 180, and Riley Knockreiner. He is a 6'185 pound senior. The cornerbacks are Axel Elaine, a 6'3", inch, 185 pound junior, and Jordan Mowbray, sophomore, 6'1", 165. Looking at the linebacking core, how about Colton Brunel? Yeah, he can play defense too. He's a linebacker, a 6'1", inch, 205 pound senior. Connor Roach getting a start at linebacker, 5'9", 160, and a junior. Jefferson Mowbray, 6'3", uh, 200 pounds and a senior. And rounding out the linebacking core, Luke Cawley, junior at 6'3", 180. Looking at the uh, 
defensive front. The defensive ends are Jordan Reuter, a sophomore, 6'2", 220, and Wyatt Griffin, a sophomore at 6'5", 245, and in the middle is Jack Rolke. He is a 6'3", inch, 230-pound junior. So those are your defensive starters for Columbus. Now, earlier this week, uh, Wade Bates, our good friend and colleague, had a chance to chat with Columbus head coach Andy Selgrad. Let's play that interview for you right now. The Columbus High School football team it drops down to Division 5 after winning the Division 4 championship last year. They drew a number 3 seed, and we're going to bring in head coach Andy Selgrad as his team gets ready for Broadhead Judah. Coach, just uh, what's the state of your team as you prepare for Broadhead Judah? Oh, we're focused. You know, it's second season. It's always exciting. So, you know, we've got a new juice to us, and we're looking forward to face and broadhead coach uh, when the seedings came out you know a few head scratchers across the state but you know thinking you know you have one loss to a under, to a conference champ lodi a three seed what were your mindset when you saw that uh the computers spit you out as a three seed well i'm sure the entire state saw my reaction i was a little surprised um you know but it is what it is that's the card the cards we were dealt and we we, we still got to win football games you know no matter who we face uh, we just happened to fall into you know, the second toughest co quadrant in the entire state. Uh, a lot of very solid football teams. Broadhead Judah is one of those solid football teams. You know, they're very talented on both sides of the ball. And we got our work cut off for us. But, you know, we're, we're tested. We're battle hardened. You know, Capital Conference, I, I, I still maintain it's one of the best conferences in the state at our level. And, you know, I feel like it's really prepared us for this. Coach, you mentioned Broadhead's talented on both sides of the ball. What challenges do, when you look at film do you see out of that squad? Well, they're big and they're physical. They really are. And so they're very disciplined. Uh, they're very sound on both sides of the ball. And, you know, we just got to match that intensity and exceed it. And we got to play, you know, execute good football on both sides of the ball. Coach, you mentioned dropping down to Division 5 this year. Is that a whole new set of teams? that Have you, have you scouted? Do you know much about the teams in the Division 5 field after being in D4? Uh, not really. <laughs> so... We're, we're trying to figure out all these teams. I mean, you know about the Aquinas's. We knew about Broadhead Judah. They've always been a good uh, football program over the years. So, you know, those kind of schools are, are, are very talented. Same thing with Prairie du Chien because they've played some of our capital conference teams in the past. So we're well aware that there's a lot of talented football teams in Division Five, And our familiarity with Mayville as well, they're traditionally very talented, very good in D5. So, um I may not know all of them, but I'd know enough to know that D5 is no joke. This is not going to be easy. Coach, so what are some of the keys uh, for your squad to, uh, to you know, get a victory over Broadhead Jude and also make another deep run in the postseason? Uh, focus and intensity. Really, those are the two things that we're going to focus on. And so it, we, we've been getting better every week, and we just want to keep building on that, and we just want to keep doing what we do uh, to keep this march going. Well, you can watch Friday night's game on Daily Dodge TV if you can't make it out to the field. Uh, Mike Tronson and uh, Tim Haldeman will have the call. Coach Selgrad, uh, thanks for the time, and good luck in your postseason run. Thanks, Wade. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. Our national anthem here at Columbus Fireman's Park. Welcome back into the broadcast. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman, Aiden Voigt. We're all here for this Division 5 Level 1 matchup. It's Broadhead Judah and Columbus, the Cardinals and the Cardinals tonight. 
And we're glad you're with us on Daily Dodge TV. Tonight's game brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement and Columbus Family Dental. Tonight's game also brought to you by Prairie Ridge Health, American Packaging Corporation, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, The Dump in Cambria, and White Construction. Hey, if you'd like to send us an email during the broadcast tonight, we'd love to hear from you. Sports at DailyDodge.com. That's sports at DailyDodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, and please put Columbus or Broadhead Judah in the subject line uh, so I know it's you. Uh, but again, we'd be happy to give you a shout out tonight. Sports at DailyDodge.com. A lot of red, a lot of white and black out there on this field tonight. And uh, just so you can keep it straight at home, Columbus wearing the black jerseys with the red numbers, the white pants and the white helmets with the red trim. Meanwhile, for Broadhead Judah, they've got white jerseys with black pants. They've got red numbers. Their helmets are black with some red and white trim. So here we go. The road to Madison begins tonight here at Fireman's Park in Columbus for these two squads. Again, Broadhead Judah, solid six and three season. Number six seed and Columbus eight and one and a number three seed entering play here tonight. But a beautiful night for high school football. I mean, this is football weather at its finest here. It was a beautiful day. We had a gorgeous sunset behind us here, and now we're ready to kick things off. Mike, do you ever recall Columbus in black no. jerseys No, before? I don't. I, I don't. We'll have yeah. to ask the old guys. Marlon, Schweitz, you ever seen Columbus in black? They're brand new. They're, seriously, okay, they're so brand new. There, okay. there you go. Brand new right. jerseys debuted. So it's going to be... Marcus McIntyre back deep to receive the opening kick. And kicking it away for Columbus, Otto Andler. And we are ready for high school football. Glad you're with us on Daily Dodge TV. Good crowd on hand here. and Wouldn't expect anything less as Andler has the ball on the tee. And we're just waiting for the approach. Here's the approach. Boom. This ball's in the air. End over end kick. Fielded at the 16, or the 26, I should say, to the 30. And to the 35, out to the right side, 45. And getting taken down was Owen Hacked on the return. Bagley on the return. Uh, Bagley, I should say, Gunner Bagley. I'm thinking Columbus. Gunner Bagley on the return for Broadhead Judah and takes it out to the 45. That's good field position. It was a short kick to begin with. And he took it from the 26 out to the 45. So a 19 yard return. What's the matter, Tim? Yeah, our stat keeper doesn't have a pin. There we go. Nice job, Tim. <laughs> Here we go. First and 10. And a fake. And a throw by the quarterback, Bakop. And it is caught by Bagley down inside the 20 yard line. There was a defender all over him. And Bakop threw it up. Bagley makes the catch. Jordan Mulberry, the cornerback, had pretty good coverage, but Bagley's able to haul it in for a big gainer. And now we have an injured player that they're, or do we? Yeah, they're just, he's walking off a little slowly. That's actually Bagley, the receiver. So he's going to walk off to his own sideline. 37 yard gain. But that is, what a way to start for Broadhead Judah. As Bakop connects with Bagley. Bagley now hurt. Let's hope it's not serious. And it's first and 10 for Broadhead Judah at the Columbus 19 yard line. Back up under center, turns around, hands it off. And that is a ball. The ball's loose. Columbus, Columbus it. has it. Down inside the 10 and around the nine yard line. And guess who recovered it? It was Mowbray. He couldn't stop that long pass play a moment ago, but he's able to recover the fumble. And so just like that, Columbus comes up with the football. They're going to have it in the shadow of their own goalpost, first and 10 from their own nine-yard line. Again, Columbus moving left to right in the black jerseys. Two plays from scrimmage on all kinds of action. <laughs> yeah. Some good, some bad. <laughs> So here we go. 
Columbus with its first offensive possession and a first and 10 from their nine yard line. Peyton Powers, the quarterback, Colton Brunell behind him, standing at the one yard line and Brunell takes the hand up straight ahead, 10, 15, he's to the outside, he's to the 20, near sideline 25, stiff arms a man and he gets wrestled out of bounds near the 30 yard line, but Colton Brunell with a burst of speed up the middle and then cut to the near sideline. Let's see where they mark it here. They mark him at the just across the 30. Yep, that would be a 22-yard pickup at about the 31-yard line, or just shy thereof. First and 10 Cardinals were uh, 55 seconds into the contest, no score. And Cardinals now with a the Columbus Cardinals with the first and 10 on their own 31. Powers out of the gun, gives it to Brunel. Bounces to the outside, gets spun around and taken down around the 35. So Brunel that time tackled on the play by Owen Hillstrom, the defensive end. Picks up four on the play. They'll mark it at the 35 yard line. Second and six for Columbus. I'm gonna have to train myself not to say Cardinals tonight because both of these teams are the Cardinals. One thing I can safely say about this game tonight, the Cardinals will win. <laughs> Second and six. Columbus, Columbus. Uh, both offensive plays has been to the near side, so we'll see if they continue to pound that side. Brunel takes Ooh. the hit. He's going to get taken down for a loss on the play. And that was a big stop by Blake Matthias, the senior defensive end, coach's son. And that's a big play as uh, it goes for a loss of about two on the play. It'll be third down and a short eight or a long seven. You take your pick. 9.49 and counting left in the scoreless first quarter. We're just underway. The Broadhead Judah team got the opening kickoff on the first play from scrimmage. Big pass to get into the red zone and then on the next play they fumbled it. Columbus recovered and now Columbus marching with a third and eight though on their own 33. Powers out of the gun, has the snap and they blow it dead as he took the snap. We have a timeout. A timeout called by Columbus, their first of the evening. They'll have two remaining. It's an early timeout for Columbus with 9.26 to go in the first quarter. No score as of yet. Emails are coming in already. Good luck, Columbus Cardinals from Julie Benish from Marshfield. And uh, it's my hometown team, says Julie. Go Jordan Reuter, my cousin's grandson. So Julie, thank you very much for checking in. What else do we have here? We've got uh, another go cards from the Poznanskis and the Talbots here on South Birdsey. That's oh. not too far away, is yep, it? Yep. They could probably hear us without uh, tuning in on Daily Dodge. And one more for you. Uh, this is uh, Rodney watching the cards and says hi to all his former students at CHS. Coughlin? Yep. Coughlin. Yep, Rodney yeah. Coughlin. So Mike, go cards, I, uh, he says. I just got a text from my, uh, my golf partner this afternoon. Dylan Van Sickle, and uh, he's got a shout out to uh, his young son, Vinny. So, happy birthday, Vinny. All right, big third and eight early in the game. Third and eight for Columbus from their own 33 yard line after that timeout. Powers has it, wants to throw. Got protection, now he's rolling to the near side, looking for somebody, dumps it up. Brunel makes the catch, and he's knocked out of bounds almost immediately on the play by the linebacker, David Maslowski, but it's not nearly enough. Uh, and it's going to be a fourth down and a punting situation for Columbus. So the Broadhead Judah defense does its job. Riley Knockreiner will punt it away for Columbus. Bagley, along with uh, McIntyre, are going to go back deep to field the punt. You say, uh, you, uh, Tim, your mom is uh, from Judah? Uh, yeah. 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 My, my mom grew up just outside of... Lovely downtown Judah. Here's the punt high floater. It's going to take a Columbus bounce, and it'll go inside the 30, and it'll die at about the 27 or so. Well, you're, of course, you uh, grew up in uh, the metropolis of uh, South Wayne, right? So <laughs> Two miles out towards Wyota and Woodford and Lamont. and uh, Grasha in there. Oh, yeah, too. Grasha's just down the road a few yeah. miles, yeah. So you know that Don't area forget a lot than I do. Don't forget Wyota. Oh, how could you ever forget oh, Wyota? Oh, no, not a chance. That's where I, uh, I grew to uh, baseball fame. You didn't know that, did you? 
I've never heard baseball, fame, and Haldeman <laughs> in the same sentence before. Oh, but come I, on. Okay. My dad was a whole lot better than I was. First like, and 10 for Broadhead Judah from their own 27, moving right to left. This will be their third offensive play from scrimmage. They hand it off, and boy, there's nothing happening. And Matthias was the ball carrier. Blake Matthias, 6'1", 215-pound senior. He picked up a yard, but boy, there wasn't much there, and he was lucky to get a yard out of that play. Second and nine coming up from the 28 after a gain of one. No score here at Fireman's Park, 833 and counting left in the first quarter. It's second and nine, Broadhead Judah from their 28 yard line. And faking the handoff, quarterback back up throws, okay. it's caught at Saunders 40, near sideline 45, 50. He's got room, 40 down the sideline and pushed out of bounds near the 35 yard line. Isaac Saunders hauls that in from Gabe Baca. Boy, this guy can throw and he's got some receivers that can catch the ball as we've seen early on in this one. It's a first and 10 for Broadhead Judah at the Columbus 35 yard line. Columbus had a blitz from their defensive right side, got there just a tick late, and uh, credit the uh, quarterback Baca to uh, catch that blitz, and he tossed it out here to Saunders on the near flat, and he was wide open down the left sideline. On first and 10, Baca up under center, they motion man, and now the play's blown dead. We have a penalty marker flying as that one was snapped. We'll get the call from our official. It's a false start on Broadhead Judah. So that'll move him back five yards. It'll turn it into a first and 15. Uh, something to keep an eye on. Bakup just went over to the sideline and he's being replaced as he's shaking. Nope, he's coming back in. But he was shaking, it uh, looked like he's shaking his right hand. Uh, I don't think he's uh, gonna sit out, but uh, keep a watchful eye on that one. First and 15, Broadhead Judah now at the Columbus 40 yard line. Back up, turns around, hands it off Saunders. Breaks one tackle inside the 40 and he's taken down near the 38, maybe the 37 tackle made by Brady Link. So it's a short pickup. And oh, there's a flag, it's coming back, hang on. Oh, there's a flag, so wipe that one off the board. Did you guys see the uh, call here? Was that a holding? Okay, thank you. I missed it. Uh, just he was finishing up as I was looking up from my stat sheet. After the penalty. So now, first and, 30. First what? and 25. The ball's on the 50. They got to get down to the 25-yard line to get a first down. On first and 25, back to throw, Baca throws it right side, it is caught by Bagley, and his momentum just takes him out of bounds on the far side of the field, over on the uh, baseball field dirt. And so that's gonna, they're gonna mark it about the 38 yard line, so it's a gain of right around 12 yards on the pass play. And it's now gonna be second and 13, maybe a short 14 to go. 7.42 left to play, first quarter, no score, level one, D5, Columbus and Broadhead Judah. Columbus, or pardon me, uh, Broadhead Judah already with three completed passes for a total of 86 yards. And before this play is snapped, now they're gonna call timeout, so Broadhead Judah takes timeout. Let's take a one minute break. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Join the American Packaging team and help create packaging for some of the most iconic brands in the world. Sarah says the benefits at American Packaging are fantastic. 
At American Packaging, we have a great 401k match. They match us 75 cents for every dollar up to 5%. And we get quarterly bonuses. If we meet our budget, we get a Christmas bonus. If you've been here five years, you will also get a seniority bonus. Learn more about joining the American Packaging team in Columbus and DeForest by checking out the careers page at AmericanPackaging.com. And as we come back to action, Gunnar Bagley with another reception takes it all the way down the near sideline to the 10 or maybe inside the 10 of Columbus. Knockreiner knocking him out, but as we were coming out of the timeout, they got things going again in a hurry, and we apologize for that. Is it coming well, we back? We got a holding call. It's, uh, yep, it's going to oh, come goodness. back. So oh, Columbus that, dodging a bullet there. Boy, they really did. Tell you. But uh, it's clear already, we're not even halfway through the first, qu first quarter, that this passing offense of Broadhead Judah is the real deal. As uh, you know, we, this is a team that Tim, you and I don't get to see very much, as we don't, uh, you know, we don't do a lot of games in that part of the state, or at least not very often. But I'm impressed already. This is a quality well, offense. If that pass completion would have uh, not been brought back by the penalty, they'd be well over the hundred yard mark, Mike. And we're not even halfway through the first half quarter. So after that penalty, it's second and seven. Broadhead Judah at the Columbus 31. Motion to man, that's Breezy. Back up, back to throw. He is gonna launch it over on the right oh side. Goodness. Look at that, wide open, Bagley catches at the 10. And he's driven out of bounds. But another reception for Gunnar Bagley. Oh my goodness. Gunnar Bagley, looking at the receiving stats, came into this game with 543 receiving yards on the season and eight receiving touchdowns. And he takes it. I'm going to call it the seven. Yeah, I would say that about the oh, seven. I'm going to say about eight, eight on the okay, scoreboard. Yeah, I'll agree with that. So uh, 23 yards to Bagley. My goodness. So now, once again, Broadhead Judah in the red zone. Seven minutes and change left to go in a scoreless first quarter. First and goal. Broadhead Judah at the eight yard line. Back up. Turns around, hands it off. Matias straight ahead and flag on the play as he gets down to about the three, maybe even the two. There's a flag down as Matias, the ball carrier, took it inside the five, but let's see what the call is. Is it going to stand? Well, Broadhead's walking backwards. And they are walking backwards, so the early indication is it's on Broadhead Judah, but we'll see. Is our official going to give us the call the legal procedure yeah false start so oh and a hold it. and a hold okay there were two yeah They're, so there you go so obviously they'll decline the false start and take take the hold and accept it so just like that it's now first and goal at the 19 yard line boy this this has been a bizarre start to this game as far as one step forward, two steps back kind of a thing. Here we go, first and goal from the 19. Broadhead Judah. Hand off Matthias straight ahead, and he somersaults over a defender. Now a late flag as the wow. play goes over. Oh, my goodness. That came out at the, at the end of the play. Matthias got to about the 15, but something, maybe, uh, maybe an extracurricular at the end of the play. Broadhead's been walking backwards. Yeah, they are. This is going to be uh, some type of a personal foul. Oh, yeah, the way he threw that flag, yeah, the referee, with I mean to tell you, he threw that flag uh, a, a record height. It's like the 4th of July, you know, fireworks going on. <laughs> it was that high in the air. And here's our Dead call. ball, so the, the play counts. The, the play counts. Right. Personal foul is the call on Broadhead Judah. So you're right, Tim, the play counts, and then they mark off the penalty, the personal foul. In this case, the play will count, and it will be second down and goal. So second and goal coming up, oh. correct? And yeah. Yes, and they'll mark him back. From the 33, yeah. 34. 33, and it's timeout, Broadhead Judah. And now Broadhead Judah calling timeout. So we, again, a bizarre start. That's already three of the six total timeouts used. We'll keep it here. Uh, let's get to some more emails that have uh, come in. And uh, let's see here. Uh, says, the cards are looking strong, watching all the way from my vacation home in Fulton County, Georgia. Go Cards, that's from Ronald checking in tonight. Let's see what else we have here. I'm kind of sorting through emails because we're sharing our email box with another game. 
Hey, let's go, let's go cards from Colin Selk's mama watching on Oxbow Road tonight. And let's see what else we have here. <clears throat> that says, this says, uh, let's go Columbus cards. Good luck to Colton Brunel setting a new record, hopefully. Nikki and Gray Stormer. Checking in, we'll get to some more emails shortly. Sports at dailydodge.com if you want to send us an email. It is second and goal from the 33 yard line for Broadhead Judah, back to throw back up. Pump fake, now he launches it down the right sideline. It is picked off. That is Link, Brady Link. Leaping interception on the far side of the field. Second turnover of the game for Broadhead Judah. And Whoa. just when it looked like they were going to light the lamp first, Columbus comes up with the turnover, and they're going to get the ball back. Well, Brady Lank, uh, playing safety, just read the eyes of the uh, quarterback that time, and, and he did everything correctly as your, your safety, and uh, the timing was just perfect. Caught the ball uh, in double team situation just prior to going out of bounds on the far sideline. First and 10, Columbus from their own six yard line. And the give to Brunel to the 10, 15. Mm -hmm. And oh, he gets tripped up. I'm going to tell you. the 15, he, he had a burst he, of speed. He has had a couple of runs so far. And uh, that one, he ended up getting uh, nine. We're going to give him nine. And uh, that gives him 33 for the night. But uh, in, yeah. both times he was within an eyelash of breaking it. Of breaking it. So, you know, once he breaks that uh, linebacker core, it's pretty much all over. Gain of nine, second and one from the 15. And Powers will take it, and guess who? Brunel straight ahead. He's to the outside, he's to the 20, and trying to break a tackle, 25 does break a tackle, spins 30, across the 30 and out to the 35 yard line. Colton Brunel finally tackled on the play by Isaac Saunders. Add 19 more. We're going to keep an eye on that 52. as we said. He's up to 52. He needs 182 to tie the record we talked about. 183 will break it. If he can get to that point tonight, he would become the all-time leading rusher in Wisconsin high school football. Current record holder, Tyler Tenney of Racine Lutheran, 6,932 career yards. All right, on first and 10 for Columbus. From their own 34, the give to Brunel. Ahead 35-40 and gets tripped up. And taken down. Saunders was there to bring him down, but another nice run. And boy, every uh, time out, it's, let's give the ball to Colton and see what the North Dakota commit can do as he picks up, oh, about what, six, almost seven yep, on the we're play. we're gonna give him six. To the 41 yard line, second and four. Five minutes and counting left in a scoreless first quarter. Winner of this game goes to level two next weekend. Tell you what, I'm gonna make it seven, Mike. Okay. Snap back to Powers. He's gonna throw this time. Launches it, caught Link near the midfield. Stripe breaks the tackle, 50s. Near sideline, or far sideline, I should say, as he's driven out of bounds. But Brady Link, well, that's a trick play for Columbus. It's a pass. <laughs> and Powers completes it to Link. Marking at the 44-yard line of Broadhead Judah. And Columbus. 18-yard gain to Brady right. Link. Nice little stiff arm to free himself for an extra half a dozen yards right near midfield. First and 10. Columbus now at the Broadhead Judah 44 with 440 to go in the first quarter. Back to Powers and gives it to Brunel. Near, uh, he goes up the middle, 35-30. He's to the outside, 25. Oh my goodness. Down to the 20 yard line goes Colton Brunel before he's brought down by McIntyre and Saunders. Because like they'll mark him inside the 20 actually. 25 big ones. To the 19. So, with 4.30 to go in the first quarter, still scoreless. Well, wait a minute. We're coming oh, back. Oh, shoot. We're coming back. And I didn't see the flag behind the play. And, and they're going to mark it back at the 50. 
So a holding call is gonna wipe that one off the books. How yeah, can, I never, I never saw that. That was play. a six-yard penalty. Apparently, well, there isn't such thing. First, first and sixteen. And the snap to Powers gives it to Brunel. He's met at the fifty and taken down. No, 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 no. Oh, Quarterback's got oh, the ball. Okay. I, I followed the fake. <laughs> well, I'm glad you weren't following the fake, Tim. So Powers on the keeper gets five yards out of it. It'll bring up. Second and 11. I followed the fake. I don't try not to do that too often, but it happens. Oh, it's uh, very difficult sometimes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, hey, maybe you had a switch, and uh, I should do the stats. <laughs> well, it's probably most important tonight. Tonight it, it, tonight yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, it's very important tonight. Second and 11, Columbus from the Broadhead, Judah 45. Single receiver to the right. A couple of receivers to the left. Out of the gun, Powers has the snap, wants to throw. Got time. Looking around, still looking. Now being chased out of the pocket. And he's going to step up, throw. It is caught. Link. And his momentum kind of taking him out of bounds on the near side, right near his own bench. Let's see where they mark him here. We're going to so, give him seven. Yeah, I would seven say on that reception. 38 yard liner, just shy thereof. 327 left to play in the first quarter. I'll tell you what, uh, Peyton Powers bought himself a lot of time with his elusiveness in the backfield. Um, I wouldn't count on that every time, though, because, uh, oh, man, those guys are pretty good in that defensive line. Third and five from the 38. Hand off Brunel, straight ahead, breaks the tackle, 35, and then gets taken down around the 34-yard line. Ooh, it's really, really close. I think that was Hillstrom that brought him down. And as you mentioned, Tim, it is mighty close to the stick. He they're is. Gonna, they're going to measure. Yeah, they're going to have to measure this. As it's uh, a little too close oh, to tell. Oh, boy, this one, I'll tell you what, this one's going to test my uh, my abilities here. But I think, he's, uh, I think he's got it by a toenail. Here come the chains. This email says, cheering for Columbus from Shell Lake, Wisconsin. We miss seeing number 23, Aaron Ecker, and our grandson on the field, but enjoy watching these young men. We'll always be a Cardinal fan. Oh. Dave and Deb oh, Ecker short. checking in, and he's a little bit short. Well, thanks for the email. Let's see what else we have here. Go Cards. Love watching my nephew, Riley Knockreiner, and the team from Destin, Florida. That's from Stacy. Stacy checking in. Stacy Hall, thank you very much. We will get to some more emails in a moment. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to chime in, 314 to go in the first. No score. Fourth and one, Columbus at the Broadhead, Judah 39. Powers out of the gun as they're going to go for it. And they snap it and give it to who else? Brunel, right side. He's to the 30. First down, 25 or near abouts and knocked out of bounds. I lost him near his own bench or sideline, I should say. But he got the first down. They needed just a few inches, basically, and you give it to your best player, and he delivers. He got 15. 78 and counting for Colton Brunel so far. Under three minutes left in the first quarter. First and 10, Columbus at the Broadhead, Judah, 24. Here's Powers, barking out signals. Takes the snap out of the gun, giving it to Brunel. Straight ahead, 15, 10. Oh he's my. to the right side, five. Into the end zone, touchdown Columbus. Colton Brunel, 24 yard run to pay dirt. And with 2.45 to go in the first quarter, it is six nothing in favor of Columbus. Brunel from 24 yards away. I'll tell you, they made contact after about five yards and spun out of a couple of would-be tacklers and uh, waltzed into the end zone for six. And here's the extra point attempt. What do you have from the out of the hold of Peyton Powers. Kick is up by Andler, and it is good. 7-0 Columbus, 2.45 left in the first. We'll take a one-minute break. Back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. 
The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. All righty, it's seven nothing in favor of Columbus. 2.45 to go in the first quarter. And here is Otto Andler with the approach and the kickoff. End over end kick, and this is going to be fielded by McIntyre back around his 10 to the 15. Side steps one man up near the 20 yard line, and he gets taken down there. And we just got a message sent to us that says, Let's go, Broadhead Judah, all the way from uh, Florida. They're checking in. Let's see. I'm just trying to see who that was from uh, Braden. It says, Well, it says, Let's go, Broadhead Judah, and watching Braden Sweeney from Florida. That's from Christy checking in. Sorry, I had to uh, enlarge that to uh, read it, but Christy, thank you very much for checking in tonight. Sports at DailyDodge.com. If you want to check in on first and 10, it's on the ground and not a lot of running room there. Saunders. Saunders. Saunders on the carry. Yes, it was. Brady Link on the stop. Just over two minutes left in period number one. Seven nothing Columbus. It's a second and seven coming up for Broadhead Judah at their own 24 yard line. Back up, back to throw. He's being chased and he will get sacked. He is sacked on the play by Jefferson Mowbray, outside linebacker and it's a loss on the play. They'll mark him back at the 12, maybe the 13, somewhere in that neighborhood. They're, they're going to call it the 13-yard uh, line. So third minus, down and 19 now. Minus 11 on that carry, or on that sack. Minus 11. Third and a long for Broadhead Judah. Third and 19 to be exact from their own 13. Trips to the right. Nope, oh, they're going to no, they're going to put one receiver to the right. And another one to the near side. Back to throw. Baca being chased. Screen. Dumps off a screen. Oh, boy. And here we go. And uh, that's going to go for a loss. As making the catch was Isaac Saunders. And screen pass on the play. Kind of Roach over there. Roach able to bring him down. Fourth down and long. And well, I guess they, they're going to mark him back at the 13. So it was no gain on the play. All that for no gain. And now fourth down, it's a punting situation. And Gunnar Bagley will have to punt right near his own goal line. So Columbus stands uh, to get a really good field position I'll out tell of you this. You, credit Roach for uh, fighting through the uh, screen over there on that right side on that uh, third down play. And this is Brady Link taking it around the 43 to the 45 50. 45 40, near sideline and driven out of bounds. Right around the 35 yard line of Broadhead Judah. But as I said, Columbus gonna have excellent field position now. Leading seven nothing with 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Go Columbus watching in Beaver Dam. Our good friend Big Jer with an email tonight. Big Jer, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Let's see what else we have here. I'm uh, trying to sift through these emails because I'm sharing an email box with our crew that's broadcasting Beaver Dam and Slinger tonight. We'll get to some more here momentarily. First and 10. 
Columbus at the broad hit, Judah 35, the flip goes to, this is Connor Roach and he's gonna take it all the way in for the touchdown. They used Brunel as a decoy, flipped it to the motion man Roach. Brunel acted as the blocker and Roach took it in from 35 yards out to make it 13 nothing in favor of Columbus with well, six seconds to go in the period. Well, it's, it, it actually uh, turned out to be a fly sweep in the sense that Roach lined up on the right side of the formation, went into uh, in motion right in front of the quarterback and a quick flip. I don't know if they call that a run or a pass. Handler's kick is up and good. 14-0 Columbus. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. The fun doesn't stop when the game clock hits zero. Celebrate your team's sweet victory at the Dump Bar and Grill in Cambria and tackle some mouth-watering appetizers, award-winning juicy burgers, or some crispy wings. The Dump Bar and Grill has it all. And with their newest Annex Edition, enjoy more seating for all fans to gather. Satisfy your hunger and get to the Dump Bar and Grill in Cambria, your go-to spot for great food and good times. TheDumpBar.com, cheering on all our local student-athletes. Cheer! Now, cheer louder! Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Six seconds remaining in the first as the ball is in the air and this is gonna go into the end zone for a touchback. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman with you at Fireman's Park in Columbus. This division five level one playoff game between Columbus and Broadhead Judah. And right now it is 14 nothing in favor of the home team. It's gonna be first and 10 for Broadhead Judah at the 20. If you're a Broadhead Judah fan, there's a lot of football left to be played. So uh, don't hang your heads. Long well, way to go in this one. They have already proven that they can pass the football against the uh, Columbus defensive uh, core. This time right on cue, they keep it on the ground after we talk about the passing offense. That's Matthias on the carry that time. And that's the end of the first quarter with our score. Columbus 14, Broadhead Judah nothing back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you were in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate. We look forward to serving you. Yeah, we start the second quarter of this Division Five Level One playoff game. Mike and Tim up in the booth, along with Aiden, our videographer and engineer. Fourteen nothing. Columbus leads Broadhead Judah as we begin period number two. And for Broadhead Judah, they're faced with a second and four from their own 26, moving left to right now. Back to throw back up, and he's going to run to the near side looking for somebody, and he's just going to end up throwing it up for grabs. And is that? It's intercepted. I didn't know if he'd be able to stay in bounds, but Roach leaping to grab that. All right now, are they gonna, or what are they saying now? The pass on the sideline. 
There's a penalty flag. There's a flag at down. The 20. Roach picked it off, and it looked like they were signaling it was an interception, but now hold everything. So it's a hold on, they're going to decline it. Yeah, it's Columbus football. So the interception stands because they'll decline the holding penalty and take the result of the play, which is an interception. And what a great leaping oh. grab by Roach on the near sideline to get his feet in bounds. Huh? I'll tell you, I think he's related to the flying Wallenda. Wow. I mean, that was a tightrope job like you've never seen. Third turnover of the game for Broadhead <laughs> Judah comes seven seconds into the second quarter. Oh, I thought it was Roach. I, I apologize. I thought it was Roach. There's, uh, I'm standing corrected, apparently. Back to Powers, gives it up Brunel, straight ahead, 35. Ooh. And he gets taken down. He had a burst of speed once again, but uh, nice job by Saunders. And also some uh, big time help from Eric Woodward, the cornerback. Gain of five. And it's gonna be second and about five for Columbus at the Broadhead Judah 33 yard line. Opening minute of play, second quarter, 14-0 Columbus. Single receivers to each side. And Powers gives it to Brunel. He's to the right side, 30. Cut back, breaks the tackle, 25. Now he's to the outside, he's to the 20. And going to run out of bounds inside the 20. Colton Brunel zigzagging his way for a first down and more. Inside the 20 yard line where it's going to be first and 10. First and 10 Columbus in the red zone now. Add 15. Does that bring him to 117 now? 122. 122, I bet I stand corrected. Again, so he now needs 60 yards, according to our count, to tie the all-time state rushing record, and he needs 61 from this point to break it. <coughs> First and 10, Columbus at the broad hit, Judah 18. Snap to Powers, giving it to Brunel. Straight at 15, breaks tackle, 10, five. Touchdown, Columbus. Colton Brunel, 18 more yards. This one is his second touchdown of the game. And with 10.58 to go in period number two, it's 20 to nothing, Columbus. 140 yards gained on 12 carries thus far. And, th and uh, three TDs. Or two TDs. Two, two TDs. Two TDs, yep. Beaver Dam leads Slinger 7-0 in the first half of their game. Andler's going to attempt an extra point. Out of the hold of Powers. Low snap, bobbled. Powers gets it down, though. Handler's kicked plenty of leg, and it's good. 21-0 Columbus. We're back in one minute. Back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. Lamers Bus Lines. Our community needs you. What drives you? Drive for Lamer. I wanted to do something good for my community, and now I get to make a difference in kids' lives. Call or visit us at golamers.com for more information. There's only so much fishing a retired guy can do. What drives you? Drive for Lamers. Our kids need us. I felt like I needed to do something good for my community. Call or visit golamers.com for more information. And I'm getting paid for it. Lamers Bus Lines. Our community needs you. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Is it 46? What's that? I, I've got him for and we are back. 10.58 <clears throat> to go first half. And here's the kickoff, and it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So we were discussing as we were coming out of the break what Colton Brunel needs now, and uh, what do you have him for, Tim? Well, I have him for 140. Okay, because we were told up here that that the uh, statistician said what now? The team statistician said 46? So that would be... To tie or to break? To break. Right. Let's, just so hope he, let's just hope if he does get it, he's gonna, it's not, there's gonna be a big run that we're, there's gonna be no question <laughs> that we're off. <laughs> let's just hope that happens. 
All right, first and 10, Broadhead Judah from their own 20. Now trailing by three scores. Hand off, and Matthias is going nowhere. In fact, he might have lost a yard. Boy, Jefferson Mowbray got in there in the backfield, and that one going nowhere. Go Seabus, watching from Bloomington, Illinois, on a Badger bus trip along with Tim Haldeman's college buddy, Steve. That's from Larry and Nancy. Send us an email tonight. Steve. Steve, uh, I got a lot of buddies named Steve. <laughs> you do, huh? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to think so anyway. Steve who? Help us out. <laughs> and on second and 10, back to throw back up, being chased out of the pocket. Oh! It's one man, but not the second man. As he is brought down in the shadow of his own goalpost. And that was... Wyatt Graffin on the sack. And it is now going to be third in a country mile for Broadhead Judah. Well, it was a tag team affair. I don't know who his teammate was because, very honestly, the uh, the new numbers on the Columbus jerseys are very difficult to read. They are. <laughs> Red on black. They need a white outline or something. But they're, once they get down, way down to the uh, end zone down there, we can't read them. Third <laughs> and 21, they're calling it from the nine-yard line. Back up under center, back to throw. Throws it to the far side, Bagley with a catch and taken down around the 20. So he picks up 11, but it's gonna bring up fourth and 10 for Broadhead Judah with nine, 10 and counting left in the first half of play. Brady Link's going back to receive a punt. Bigley has uh, exhibited a very strong right arm, and Bigley, uh, or pardon me, Bacup has uh, exhibited a great uh, right arm, but and Bagley is tough to uh, control out there. <coughs> Here's the punt, high end over end punt. Link at his own 49 to the 50. He's to the 45, 40, 35, 30, and out of bounds he goes inside the 30 yard line. 8:35 to go in another short field for Columbus. They lead this game 21 to nothing. Let's see, got some emails coming in here. It says, uh, living in Green Valley, Arizona. Thank you, Daily Dodge and advertisers cheering loudly for Columbus, especially our grandsons, one and 11. That's from Grandma Roach. Aunt Ann and Uncle Bill Eggers checking in tonight. Thank you very much. Let's see what else we have here. <coughs> Go Brady Link from your cousin, Louder, checking in tonight. We'll get to some more in a moment. Sports at DailyDodge.com is where you'll find us. First and 10, Columbus at the broad hit, Judah at 27. Moving right to left, Powers out of the gun, has it. Throwing downfield, got a man, it is caught! Touchdown, Columbus! 27 yards on the pass play from Powers. Is that Link? Yep. Brady Link hauling in a 27-yard touchdown pass. 8.28 to go in the second. And it's now 27 to nothing, Columbus. Wow. Well, we talked about Broadhead Judah's passing game. How about Columbus there? A beautiful throw from Powers and a great catch by Link. Andler will attempt an extra point. <coughs> and it's up and good. 28-0 Columbus with 8.28 to go in the first half. Back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Knightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Knightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. At Prairie Ridge Health, we believe that orthopedics is more than surgery. It's about getting your life back. Our collaborative team of expert surgeons, therapists, and nurses work together to get you back to feeling pain-free in your daily life. 
Our innovative and proven program is designed to get you from hospital to home with confidence. Find out how the Prairie Ridge Health Orthopedic Team can help you at prairieridge.health. Prairie Ridge Health accepts over 70 major insurances, including Dean. Alrighty, 28 nothing in favor of Columbus as they kick it away. And this is going to be another touchback as it goes into the end zone. And I lost it in a pile of leaves out there. I'll tell you what, Brady Link, uh, I'm going to compare him to a, a Swiss Army knife. You know, the guy just uh, received a punt, ran it back some 20 yards for uh, Columbus to uh, set up that last touchdown. And then what does he do? But he catches a pass. He plays defense. He'll take... Uh, uh, you know, a, a counter or a, a fly sweep once in a while on offense. He just does everything out there. And, boy, I'll tell you what, if they'd have lost him to injury back three weeks ago, Mike, that would have been a huge loss for this club. On first and 10 from the 20. Buck up, being chased and sacked. <laughs> Colton Brunel can play defense, too. Big loss on the play. They're going to mark this. Ooh. Inside the five, maybe? Or no, I beg your pardon. Inside the 10. Loss of 12. They'll mark it at the eight. And speaking of eight, we have a timeout with eight minutes left in the half. Let's get to some emails that have been coming in here. I'm trying to keep up with them. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. This one says, hi, watching from Kissimmee, Florida. My grandson is a freshman on the team. Larry checking in tonight. Thank you very much for that one. Go Columbus, watching from Cancun. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go number 65, Chris. And that is from April. April Rolke checking in tonight. Jack Rolke is number 65. Let's see what else we have here. This is, oh, this is, this is for you, Tim. It says, I believe that penalty was a six-yard penalty that we talked about earlier yeah. because it was a holding penalty that occurred after the line of scrimmage from Pete Skalitsky. I don't, I don't know about that. Well, the way I was told or by the play, I, I was told by an official this year, a WIA certified official, that all holding penalties are stepped off from the line of scrimmage as opposed to where it occurred. That's what I was told, so I still haven't yeah. figured it out. This Somebody email says, my third nephew to play as a Cardinal. Go TC, number 72. That's Ray Guerrero, and that is from Jessica checking in with that email. Thank you, Jessica. I'll get to some more emails in a moment. Again, sports at dailydodge.com is where you will find us tonight. And being chased back up on second and 22, running for his life to the 10 and out of bounds on the near side. Oh, my goodness. The... Uh, Pressure by Columbus has been really good here as of late. And Bakop running for dear life on that play. They are going to mark him at the... He got a gain of six, Mike. Yeah, the, the, they're marking it at the 14-yard line. Gain of six, and that would bring up then a third down and about 16 to go. 7.50 left in period number two. Right now it's all Columbus 28-0. Credit that defensive line for Columbus right now. Uh, Bacup's just running for his life. I mean, he gets the uh, the snap and the shotgun, and he hasn't got any time whatsoever and uh, in order to uh, look downfield. Back to throw Bacup on third and 16. He screen. Screen, and it's on the ground. Incomplete. It's incomplete. So the Columbus defense has been really good as of late. And they're going to force another punting situation here as the Broadhead Judah team will have to punt it away. Let's see what else we have here. Go Cards, special shout out to our nephew, number 58, Devin McCormick, watching from home. That's Aunt Michelle and Uncle Clifford checking in tonight. Thank you very, very much for that email. Got a couple others I'll mention shortly. All right, on uh, fourth and 16, Bagley to punt in the shadow of his own goal. That's a good punt. Fielded at the 46-yard line by Link to the 50, 45. Sidesteps the tackler, now changes direction. He's to the uh, near the 40, <laughs> and the stiff arm got him an extra yard or two as he's finally run out of bounds. Seven and a half minutes to play until intermission. 28-0 Columbus, and let's back to the... Uh, 
Back to the Colton Brunel watch. Tim, what are you having for? Well, I got him for 140. Okay. So then I, I think I'm about uh, maybe three yards uh, more than what they've got downstairs. Okay. Well, if we go by what we have, he needs 42 to tie and 43 to break it. That's if we go by our numbers. So he can't get it on this drive. <clears throat> so he can't get on this drive, according to Jeff Schweitzer, right, because they're starting first and 10 at the 40 of Broadhead Judah. So that'll make it a little easier for us, maybe. All right, on first and 10, the give to Brunel, 40, outside, and to the 35, and he's touched down there by Bagley. So another five, and now you got him at 145, correct, Tim? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to just keep on this <laughs> as best we can. I mean, how often do you get a chance to witness something that special? Um, you just, it doesn't never, happen every day. Never. It's I've never, never witnessed before. it. Yeah, I've no. never witnessed that. Under seven minutes to play, second and five. Columbus at the broadhead, Judah 35. Another give to Brunel. 35, stutter step, 30, and about maybe the 29 or so. I think we're going to give him six on that play as it was, I believe that was Maslowski that, uh, yep, Maslowski brought him down. But another first and 10 for Columbus from the 29 of Broadhead Judah. They lead this game 28-0. And after that six-yard gain, 151 now for Colton. And you said you thought you were about three yards ahead of what the team stat statistician yeah. had there, too? Yeah, he can't get it on this drive. Yeah, he can't. So that's, yep. we know that. That to Powers, has the stamp, handoff, Brunel, and short yardage up the middle. The Owen Hillstrom on the he stop. On the play. And, oh, let's see. Second down and about seven. We're going to give him three. Three-yard gainer, brings him up to 154. Again, 182 is the mark, 183, and he's the new record holder. And we're talking about, if you're just joining us, Colton Brunel, the North Dakota commit, from Columbus can become tonight here the state's all-time leading rusher. Career, this is a career rushing record that he's striving for. Second and seven from the 26, give to Brunel, right side he goes and he will not be able to turn the corner. No as game. He gets spun down. Colton Brunel on the carry this time, loses about a yard, it's gonna be third down and eight. Yep. Loss yeah, of a yard. Actually it's third and nine, so that would be what, a loss of two? Loss of two. Takes him down to 152. Yep. What number? So I got him, Tim, now 152 with that yes, two-yard loss, and yes, that sir. means 30 yards to tie the record. <clears throat> Five minutes and counting left in the second quarter. Third and nine, Columbus from the Broadhead, Judah 29. And the snap to Powers. He's looking to throw this time. Launches it, and it is... Caught? Knockreiner? Yes! Knockreiner makes a sliding catch at the 20 yard line. So it's going to be fourth and one. He was just shy of the first down marker. And obviously, this is four down territory where they're at here. They're at the 20, uh, fourth and about a yard. And you're leading 28-0 already. Columbus. And Columbus is going to call timeout. Now the that's going to be their second of the half. They're down to one remaining. Broadhead Judah is already out of timeouts. Let's get to some more emails that have been uh, coming in fast and furious. Let's see here. This one says, what do we got here? Okay, Randy and Marsha. Keen or Kane, Al and Randy Mary Keen. Schweiger, and Schweiger. Steve Gates and Mary Ann oh cheering goodness. on Columbus tonight and the Wisconsin Badgers tomorrow. All right. That's a lot well, of folks tuning in. You guys in have tonight. a good time. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have here. This one says, um, this one says, light them up, Columbus. That's uh, Marcy from Columbus checking in tonight. What else do we have here? Go Brady Link 
and the Kleins and go Colton Brunel crush that record. That's from Jamie checking in on the broadcast tonight. Again, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us tonight. Send us an email, your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, and it's fourth and one. From the 20, Brunel inside the 20, 15 spins, oh, and wow. almost broke it there, but Bagley was there to slow up. That's another first down for Columbus, and let's see where they mark it. It would be at the 11. Yep, so that's nine a gain yard, of nine, nine yards. yards He's up to 161 is Colton Brudel. Four minutes left in the half. We talked about his season average at 181 yards a game. <laughs> and we're closing, he's closing in on that already and we're not even to halftime. First and 10 from the 11 for Columbus on the Broadhead Judah 11 yard line. Powers giving it to Brunel. Oop. And he might lose a yard there. He lost a couple. Uh, yeah. Let's see, uh, the, check the spot again. Loss of one on the play, second and 11. All right, loss of one, they're saying. 160. Colton Brunel trying to become Wisconsin's all time career rushing leader. He is now 20. Two yards away from tying the current mark of 6,932 career yards set by Tyler Tenner of Racine Lutheran. And he needs 23 yards to break that record and become <coughs> the new rushing king. Powers to throw, caught inside the five, and it's a touchdown, Columbus. Jefferson Mowbray hauls in a 12 yard pass. And with 2.53 to go until halftime, it's now 34-0 in favor of Columbus. Powers his second touchdown pass of the game. This one goes to Mowbray. And Columbus running away with this one. Here is the extra point by Andler. It's up and it's good. 35-0, Columbus leads back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an auto owner's insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. I got a meeting. Uh... And we are back. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman, Aiden Voigt, Daily Dodge TV, 2.53 to go. First half of this Division Five Level 1 playoff game. It's all Columbus, 35-0 over Broadhead Judah. Low line drive kick bottled near the 20. Picked back up, this is Saunders, he gets to the 25 and here comes the Cavalry. And uh, Saunders had a little trouble picking that one up. He was able to corral it eventually, but by then there was a lot of black jerseys in the zip code. And uh, so it'll be first and 10 for Broadhead Judah and they will mark it at the 24 yard line. And we've got a running clock. It's uh, If you would have, and you said this Tim, in the break and I agree with it, if you had said to us, Ooh. We'd have a running clock. No, you don't. I don't think you can have a running clock in the first half. No, they, they told him to serious? do it. Yeah, they told told uh, Jeff Whoa. to do it. Running the scoreboard here. I didn't think we'd see this. First and ten from the twenty-four, and that one a carry by Matthias, up the middle and the play. he picked up anything. No, no, looks like no gain. No gain on the play. It's going to be second and ten. So. Columbus has this one well at hand and we're almost to halftime. Long way to go, but 
We're going to have a running clock, it would appear, the rest of the way. And now the only question is, will Colton Brunel be able to set that record? Not here in the first half. It'll probably be in the second half. Probably third quarter, and then he'd be done for the night. Here is Bagley running to the far Whoa. side. Oh, my goodness, as he gets tripped up out of, bounds. out of bounds. Right near second base. So Bagley on that carry. Picks up first down for Broadhead Judah. You know, this Broadhead Judah team, they, they lost a lot of... Uh, a lot of players lost games to injury this year. I was talking with head coach Jim Matthias. He said the last three years, they had no starters at any time miss games. But this year, they lost an All-State running back, uh, actually his son, to an ACL injury. He's back playing you know, a little bit. They lost another running back to a knee injury. They lost a defensive back. So injuries have really hurt. And they still finished 6-3 and three and still finished fourth in the SWC despite all those injuries. Back to throw Baca. Pump fake. He's going to launch it. Over to the near side of the field. It is. Oh, wow. Does he know it's caught out of bounds? Though. What a catch. What a catch, but he was out of bounds. Oh, that was Bagley. And Bagley hauled it in, but he was not in bounds. And so with under half a minute to go, it's going to be a second and 10. Yeah, I mean, right now, 35 nothing. It's all Columbus, but we talked about it earlier. This Broadhead Judah team. They did some good things this year. I mean, they have some talent, especially at some of these skill positions. But right now, Columbus a little too much as they'll keep it on the ground. And this probably will be the last play of the half. As that was uh, McIntyre on the carry for maybe a yard or two, and that's going to do it. We've reached halftime here at Fireman's Park in Columbus at the break. In this Division 5 Level 1 WIAA playoff game, it is 35-0 Columbus on top of Broadhead Judah. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up in three minutes. We're back in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. They're something we live out. Core value number three is compassionate care. Over the years, we've learned a very important anatomy lesson. There are humans attached to the mouths we treat, and we know humans are complex with many needs beyond their teeth. Whether it's the anxiety that accompanies walking into the door of a dental office, or when you're trying to juggle all life is throwing at you, we get it. If you're looking for some compassion with your dental care, call Preferred Dental Partners today. 10% off all brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees and Compasses during the Jeep Adventure Days event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and with savings in excess of seven grand on select models, there's never been a better time to upgrade your ride. And that's not all. Fall savings are definitely in the air with 10 grand off select Ram Bighorn crew cabs while supplies last. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest refinancing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. If this heat has you realizing it's time to upgrade your home's air conditioning, don't waste another minute or another dollar on wasted energy. 
Call Surefire today to see how much you could save with a new high efficiency Lennox air conditioning system. Stay cool and stay calm knowing Surefire is here for you with 24 seven customer service. Call us at 920-485-4883 or visit us online at surefireinc.com. And we have reached halftime here at Fireman's Park in Columbus. And at the break, level one D5 playoff game. It is all Columbus as the homestanding Columbus team leads Broadhead Judah by the score of 35 to nothing. Our game is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement and Columbus Family Dental. Tonight's game also a presentation of Prairie Ridge Health, American Packaging Corporation, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for your home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service, and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, The Dump in Cambria, and White Construction. Well, when you're faced with a challenge, how you respond determines the real winners. Rural Mutual believes there's something more important than just winning or losing a game. They believe that the team, school, and fans who support their athletes with dignity and class are the true champions. Rural Mutual is the proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award since it started back in 1965. From football to volleyball to soccer to tennis, the award recognizes more than team sportsmanship. It recognizes that sportsmanship matters in your community as well. Visit ruralmutual.com slash WIAA and see how our team and your community can work together to be true champions. So Columbus, big, big lead at the break, 35 to nothing. In Columbus, a three seed and the Broadhead Judah team, the sixth seed, just got a score update here. Beaver Dam leading a slinger 21 to 14 in their Division II opening round playoff game tonight. That's being played over in Slinger. But uh, yeah, Columbus, the three seed, and the Broadhead Judah team, the sixth seed. The winner of this one moving on to level two next week and would get the winner of Prairie du Chien and Clinton. Clinton is a seven seed. Prairie du Chien is the two seed. So unless there's some sort of a major upset. That would be major. That would be major. <laughs> you're looking at, at least at this point, you're looking at Columbus heading out to Prairie du Chien next weekend <laughs> for a level two match. Now we got to get through the second That's half. That's going to be a long but Uber drive, Mike. You'll be, we'll all be riding together. I was already talking to Aiden about it. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get the uh, commandeer the station vehicle maybe. They'll let me do that. That'd be nice, you know, to ride out there in style. Better yet, a charter bus. A, a charter bus? Yeah, Look man, I want to go in comfort. No offense to the bus drivers out there. We we need yeah. them, we need them, but <laughs> I uh, I would rather ride in the station vehicle, to be Maybe honest. Maybe we can you. take the team bus. So, and speaking of, bus dri cool. speaking of bus drivers, Big Jer just checked, and he's probably mad at me now for saying I didn't want to ride the bus. Let's see what we got here. Um, well, he says, correction, Howard's Grove 6, Marshall nothing at the half. Oh. That was the score he had sent us. Thanks, Big Jer. We do appreciate it, but now let's. I mean, that's that's uh, next week. Uh, it would be Beaver Dam. Uh, Beaver Dam. It would be Columbus and Prairie du Chien, the likely matchup there. I got a score, Mike, uh, in Division Six. Cedar Grove, Belgium, is ahead of Waterloo, twenty-one to thirteen. And our good friend Joe Zander has been checking in with scores. He's up watching Randolph and Crivets because his buddy coaches at Crivets. It's Randolph leading Crivets 22 to 20 at the half in that one. That is a division seven matchup. And let's see here, we got another email that came in that says, uh, keep going Columbus cards and number 22, Luke Call. That's from uh, Grandpa Greg in Iron River, Wisconsin at, uh, at Grouse Camp with uh, the email tonight where is let's see that's uh iron river okay that's uh what up near uh iron river iron river this is iron river wisconsin is that up near uh anywhere near 
like Marinette or Peshtigo, any of those? Your guess is there? better than mine. I, I, I know Wisconsin pretty well, but I guess I'm not no. sure exactly <laughs> where Iron, Iron River. River is. Yeah. We know where Iron Ridge is. Well, we know Grouse Camp is in Iron River, so I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's hey. We haven't been go. invited yet. What's going on? <laughs> Come on, guys. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to send us an email hey, from Grouse Camp I, or from Space Camp or from Vanda Camp, whatever you want. Hey, I fit right me. in. I can't shoot straight either. <laughs> oh, the Grouse are happy. They're thriving up there, you guys. <laughs> Let's go. Hit them. All right. The Columbus High School pep band entertaining the masses here at Hafton. Let's do this. We're going to take another break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to Run down some first half stats for you right after this timeout on Daily Dodge TV. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. Air Care, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. Join the American Packaging team and help create packaging for some of the most iconic brands in the world. Sarah says the benefits at American Packaging are fantastic. At American Packaging, we have a great 401k match. They match us 75 cents for every dollar up to 5%. And we get quarterly bonuses if we meet our budget. We get a Christmas bonus. If you've been here five years, you will also get a seniority bonus. Learn more about joining the American Packaging team in Columbus and DeForest by checking out the careers page at AmericanPackaging.com. The teams at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service are growing and adding service technicians and auto lube technicians. Work in a clean shop environment with a fun and friendly team that is committed to excellence and customer satisfaction. Competitive pay based on experience, full benefits, including health, dental, 401k. Join the growing team at Beaver Dam and Mayville Tire and Service. Find full job postings on Facebook or visit either location to submit your resume. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623 5559. The fun doesn't stop when the game clock hits zero. Celebrate your team's sweet victory at the Dump Bar and Grill in Cambria and tackle some mouth-watering appetizers, award-winning juicy burgers, or some crispy wings. The Dump Bar and Grill has it all. And with their newest Annex Edition, enjoy more seating for all fans to gather. Satisfy your hunger and get to the Dump Bar and Grill in Cambria, your go-to spot for great food and good times. TheDumpBar.com, cheering on all our local student-athletes. Cheer! Now, cheer louder! Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it's a commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Our halftime programming continues here at Fireman's Park in Columbus. 35-0, Columbus leads Broadhead Judah. And uh, by the way, Big Jer just informed me that uh, Iron River, Wisconsin is just west of Ashland on Highway 2. Big Jer, thank you very much. You know, I was, I was way off because I was thinking north-northeast. Well, Ashland, Iron River, that's more north-northwestern. Uh, side of Wisconsin, I guess. So I was a little off on that, but uh, he says there's also an Iron River, Michigan, which is near the Michigan Wisconsin border. So is that maybe more northeast, Jer? I, maybe that's oh, what of I was course thinking. It is. Probably. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, appreciate that. And uh, let's see if we have any more emails that have come in here. Again, sports at dailydodge.com if you want to chime in with an email. So it's 35 nothing Columbus. We got to run down the first half scoring summary. All Columbus, obviously, they uh, 
got their first touchdown with two minutes and 45 seconds left in the first quarter. Colton Brunel, a 24-yard touchdown run. Andler's extra point made it 7-0 Columbus. And then late first quarter with six seconds remaining in the period, it was uh, Connor Roach with a 35-yard touchdown run for Columbus. Extra point good to make it 14-0 Columbus. Flip ahead to the second quarter, a minute and two seconds into the second quarter. Colton Brunel with his second rushing touchdown of the game, 18-yard run. Handler with an extra point to make it 21-0 Columbus. A minute and a half later, it was Powers with a 27-yard <coughs> touchdown pass to Brady Link for Columbus. Extra point good to make it 28-0 in favor of Columbus. And then Peyton Powers with another touchdown pass with 2.53 left to go in the second, a 12-yard touchdown pass to Jefferson Mowbray. Extra point good again. And it was 35-0 Columbus at that point, and that's our score at the break. Now, we've been talking all night long about Colton Brunel and the chance to become Wisconsin's career rushing leader. Now, entering the game tonight, if you missed it, entering tonight's game, Colton Brunel with 6,750 career rushing yards. That is That total was 182 yards away from the current record of 6,932 career yards held by Racine Lutheran's Tyler Tenner. Brunel's season average, as we mentioned this year, 181 yards a game. So coming into the night, Brunel needed 182 yards to tie the record and 183 yards to break it. Well, we had told you late in the half that he was up to about 160 rushing yards. Well, we stand corrected. Apparently there was uh, a rush that was called back or maybe one or more that were called back due to penalties. So the official team statistician has him at 124 yards at halftime. So he's going to need 58 more yards to tie the record, 59 to break it. And it's funny, we were a little confused, Tim, because the coaches up here in the coaching booth for Columbus were almost exactly what we had. You had 162, they had 160. But the official team statistician, well, we have to go by that, down on the field, uh, he had him for 124 only. And so... We're not quite there, but we have to go with what's official because we're not official. Um, thank goodness for that, right? <laughs> but that's where we have them here at the break. Okay, well, we'll take a look at some uh, team stats um, here in the first half. Broadhead Judah was uh, 7 for 10 through the air for 133 yards. Gabe Bach up the quarterback, junior quarterback, doing a nice job throwing the football, but just absolutely couldn't find any time to pick out a receiver in that second quarter in particular. His uh, favorite target tonight, Gunner Bagley, five grabs for 96 yards. Uh, rushing the football, I have uh, Broadhead Judah for 10 carries for negative 18 yards, of which Bacup has uh, garnered negative 27 on four sacks throughout this first half. And uh, Blake Matthias, uh, the leading ground gainer, five yards gained from scrimmage on four carries. So needless to say, the uh, linebackers and the uh, front uh, four or five for Columbus really doing the job here throughout this first half in regard to the run game. Columbus, uh, I have Peyton Power six for six in the first half throwing the football for 72 yards. Brady Link, his... Uh, Favorite target, three grabs for 52 yards. Uh, Colton Brunel, as we mentioned, I've got him now for uh, 18 carries for 124 yards after uh, I have been uh, told that I was not very good at this particular job. <laughs> but Tim Stormer on the over here in the coaches uh, area, he, he and I came out about the same, so I don't feel just too bad about it. So uh, rushing the football now, Columbus uh, 20 carries for 164. Grand total offensively for Columbus, 236 yards here in this first half to the 143 for um, Broadhead Judah. But second quarter, Mike, completely, completely dominated by Columbus. I mean, there, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts. And uh, this one is, uh, is in the win column at this very moment in time. Very honestly, I mean, we're going to have a running clock throughout this entire uh, second half. So now, really, the only question is, will Colton Brunell set the record tonight? And, you, you know, if you're a Columbus fan, you're hoping, I, I really hope he sets it tonight here at home. 
versus having to go on the road and you know doing it at Prairie du Chien next week. But I tell you what, though, you know, you how long do you keep men out there? I mean, knowing that the game is well at hand, and God, <laughs> God forbid you, you know, he goes out and he gets hurt. Mike, uh, let's go back a year, okay? How many times did you and I say in like the first uh, couple rounds of the playoffs last year, when that young man is out there playing offense and defense, and Columbus had a uh, 35 plus point lead in those first two, three uh, playoff games last year, and we're going like, what is he doing out there? Well, guess what? He was in the process of breaking a, a state record is what he's doing. So uh, I get it, and uh, and that's just wonderful for a, uh, a wonderful young man and a kid that works really hard to uh, to get to where he's at. You know, we're talking about this a lot, obviously, as we're getting ready to start the third quarter. It'll be uh, Broadhead Judah to kick it off. Here's Bagley's approach and a short end over end kick fielded at the 30-yard line, and he fell right down. That's Riley Kaminsky. Riley Kaminsky was able to uh, grab that. And uh, how about this? Speaking of Riley Kaminsky, this email says, watching the game from Virginia Beach, Virginia, cheering on my nephew, Riley Kaminsky, and the entire team go see bus. That's from Jody. Jody it's, it's all timing, it's, it's all timing. That's, that's called a nice segue there. Uh, sports at DailyDodge.com. If you want to send an email from wherever you are, maybe you're in Virginia Beach, maybe you're in Daytona Beach, you can send us an email, sports at DailyDodge.com. First and 10. Columbus on their own 30 in the give to guess who? Colton Brunell. And he's taken down by Matthias. Boy, Matthias there saying, uh, you're not going to get the record on this run. <laughs> As we'll, we'll give him a one. yard. Yep. So, well, I'm going to go with the official stats now because that would give him 125. Well, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Right. We, <laughs> have, we have to go with what's official. Just underway. We've got a running clock now because it's a 35 nothing score. So we have the clock will not stop unless there's a timeout called or an injury or a scoring play. It will not stop. On second and nine, the give to Colton Brunel. Near side 30, breaks a tackle 35. He's to the 40, dragging a tackle with him 45. And he's out near midfield. Colton Brunel, I tell you, he is. So strong, dragging would-be tacklers with him. And they will mark him at the... 48. At the 47 or 48 yard line. First and 10 oh, I don't know, you call it the 47 maybe? I'm going to call it the 48. He's calling it the 48. I'm going to call it 17 yards. And 17? Twenty-five and 17. 142 is what I've got Colton at now on first and 10. Well, they and the handoff to Colton spinning out of trouble, avoiding a tackler across the 50 into Broadhead Judah territory. You know, I was talking with head coach Andy Selgrad of Columbus, and you know, we I mentioned this during our pregame chat this week. and you know, they're focused on winning a football game. And, yeah, records are nice, and this would be pretty special for Colton Brunel, but they've really not really talked about it um, because their focus is, as a team, winning this game, getting better, and moving on. But that doesn't mean that they don't want to see him get the record. How many yards do you have on that one, Tim? Uh, four. Four more yards. 46. And the give to Brunel straight ahead to the 45. Spins to the 40. Out of a tackle, but then he got tripped up. So he takes it from the 47 nine. to the 38. 50. I got him at 155. Is that what you got, guys? I got him 155. Yes. 155. Right. Yep. We're all we're all kind of working together up here in the press box <laughs> on the Colton Brunel rushing record watch. He's at 155. First and ten, Columbus at the Broadhead Judah 39. Jesus. And Brunel takes it again. Straight ahead, 35 30. Inside the 30. Brunel again, the ball takes it past the first down. And he got another first down for Columbus. Another 11. Another 11 yards there to bring him up to 166. He needs uh, 16 to tie. 
16 yards would tie it, 17 to break it. Eight minutes and counting left in the third quarter. First and 10. Columbus on the broadhead, Judah 28. They give to Colton Brunel. He goes to the right side, and there's a flag, flag in the play. If a couple Two of flags, yep. Let's see what we've got here. And this one, we haven't gotten our signal yet as the officiating crew discussing it. That's uh, a walk off against Columbus. Holding. Holding on Columbus. There'll be no yards on that play. So, It'll be first down. In so Brunel still at 166. 16 yards away from tying the record, 17 to break it. <clears throat> First and 16. Columbus from the broadhead, Judah 32. Powers will hand it to Brunel. Trying to go near side to the 35 and he's just gonna run out of bounds as there was good pursuit there by broadhead Judah. Brunel wanted to turn the corner and did he get anything at all on that one? Um, Boy, it was no gain. No gain on that play. Six twenty and counting in a rapidly moving third quarter. Thirty-five nothing. Columbus leads. Broadhead Judah. And it's apparent here, Tim Haldeman, that until he breaks that record. They're not going to give the ball to anybody else, are they? <laughs> well, two receivers to the right. I get it. Uh, and I get it too. Second and 16. And off Brunel, 35 30. Oh. And he is touched down by Bagley inside the 30 yard line. Down inside the 30 yard line. We'll check the spot. Got four. Four yards. Tw I gave him four. Are we going with four or five, guys? <laughs> I went from the 32. I yeah, I'd say five. Yeah. All right, we're going with five. All right. That brings him to 171. He needs uh, 11 to tie, 12 to break. 11 to tie, 12 to break it. 520 and counting left in the third. Third and 16. Beg your pardon, third and 10. Power's going to throw. Wide Watching open. It wide open. It's oh, knocked away job. incomplete at the last second. Power's pass is incomplete. Oh my goodness. Great closing speed by the defensive back. Yeah, that was just a great play. I'm just trying to see if I can read that. That was number 24, and that was Eric Woodward, the cornerback, making a heck of a play, denying Link what could have been a touchdown. Clock still running, though, under five minutes to play, third quarter, 35 0 Columbus, fourth and 10. And you go for it here. But again, Colton Brunel at 171 yards on the night. 11 more to tie the state's career rushing record and 12 more, he will be the new record holder. On fourth and 10 from the 29. Again, Powers wants to throw. Pressure coming, he dumps it off. Got a man. Got a man, that's Kaminsky, I believe, and he gets, there's a flag down. Oh, they roughed the passer. Yeah, and that's Kaminsky that made the reception. And a flag came out. I think it's roughing the passer. Tim saying roughing the passer could very well be, but we'll uh, check it out. Personal foul, roughing the pass. <laughs> that, that was intentional grounding. That's intentional grounding. That's intentional grounding. grounding, yeah. That's not that. Well, he caught the ball. <laughs> that was a totally the wrong signal. Are you confused at home, folks? So are we. <laughs> well, the reception was down yeah. to the white yard line. Help me out. Well, that's the 30, the 22, about the. the, the it's at the 11 right oh, now. Okay, it's so at it was the 11. 18 yard gain on the play. So the ball's at the 11. It's a first down. 
play. So we are going to move it down. It'll be first and goal from inside the 10. Yeah, and actually they moved it again, Tim, because it's now placed at the 6. So it's first and goal for Columbus at the 6. <laughs> and on first and goal, Powers giving it to oh. Brunel. He stopped right away. Loss of Owen Hillstrom. Loss of three. So Brunel loses three. So we got to put him back to 168 yards, oh. right? We're going to give him a loss of four. Loss of four. All right, 167. Timeout has been called with 2.32 to go in the third quarter. Right now it's 35-0 Columbus. And again, if you're just joining us, the running back for Columbus, the North Dakota commit Colton Brunel, at 167 yards rushing in this game. And he now needs... Columbus took the timeout, by the way. There was confusion there. So I've got him at 167. So that would be 15 yards to tie the record, 16 to break it. And we're talking about Wisconsin's career rushing record. Okay, and we're on that too. We're on 16 to, to break it, yep. So we're all on the same page up here in the press box. This email says, go Seabus, watching from Upper Michigan. Go Cards, go. Colton, hope you set the record at home. That's from Todd and Julie Hornbacher and Randy and Donna Retzloff checking in on the broadcast tonight. Let's see what else we have. Let's go Columbus and Colton. That's from Mark watching in Red Granite. More emails coming up when we get a chance. All right, it is second down from the 10. Brunel, handoff, stick zags his way to the five. He's into the end zone, touchdown. Columbus. Ten yard scamper, that's the hat trick. Brunel has his third of the night. Comes with 228 left in the third. Brunel, a 10 yard touchdown run. Oh, and he's oh so close to the record. Six. Five to tie, yep. six to break it. And Handler will attempt the extra point. He's been perfect all night long. This one, plenty of leg, it's good. So it is now 42-0 Columbus. Let's take a one-minute break. We're back in One Minute Daily Dodge TV. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center, WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Is selling your home like a walk in the park? If you were in Central Park at 2 a.m., maybe. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. When it is time to sell, be it due to loss or love, growth or downsizing, staying near or going far, there are three basic steps. List it, sell it, move on. The steps are made simple by working with a trusted real estate advisor. Our family team is with you every step of the way, making those three steps as smooth and fun as possible. Kladowski Real Estate. We look forward to serving you. And we come back, here's the kickoff, end over end kick. It will be fielded right near the 10 to the 15, 20. This is Saunders, and here comes the Cavalry as he's pushed back to about the 20, but 42 nothing in favor of Columbus with 216 and counting left in the third quarter of this Division Five level one playoff game. And uh, hey, this one says, watching my cousin Riley Kaminsky from Australia. How about that? Down under. Down under. You got it. I've never been to Australia. I'd love nope. to go sometime. Yep. Would love to go. All right. Again, that running clock in effect with Columbus in front, 42-0. Score update. Krivitz leads Randolph 26-22, early third quarter in that Division 7 game. 
First and 10, Broad hit Judah from their own 24, moving left to right, Bach up throws, it is intercepted, oh, almost, almost intercepted. That was mighty close. Axel Elaine darn near had a pick six. But it's incomplete. There was nobody there. He would have waltzed into the end zone, but could not hang on. Wow. So it's gonna be second and 10. Hey, Mike, I just got a shout out from my uh, my good friend, uh, Steve Gates. He's with a bunch of uh, flunkies here from Columbus too, by the way. <laughs> Steve Burbach, Larry Olson, and Denny Balweg. Oh, man, there's the three Stooges if I ever heard them, right there. Second and Woo! 10, Broad hit Judah on their own 24. <laughs> Bach up at to throw. Here comes pressure being chased out of that pocket. Going to run with it, uh, throws, actually it's incomplete as that one was intended for Marcus McIntyre. But uh, boy, again, as he's been doing all night long, Pac up just running for his life. And we're down to under 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Again, the Colton Brunel watch, he's at 177 yards in the game. Five more yards, he ties the the state's career rushing record, and six more, he will be the new career Mike, rushing The record. only thing that I can compare this to in my lifetime is when Ron Dane broke the NCAA record against Iowa. I was sitting in section H. Everybody knew he was going to break it, but every time I see that play, I still get chills up and down my spine. End of the third quarter. Let's go to the fourth after this one-minute break on Daily Dodge TV. Lamers Bus Lines, our community needs you. What drives you? Drive for Lamers. I wanted to do something good for my community, and now I get to make a difference in kids' lives. Call or visit us at golamers.com for more information. There's only so much fishing a retired guy can do. What drives you? Drive for Lamers. Our kids need us. I felt like I needed to do something good for my community. Call or visit golamers.com for more information. And I'm getting paid for it. Lamers Bus Lines, our community needs you. In today's financial markets, you will find all your needs met at Park Village Shopping Center. Time is right for a home equity line of credit. The folks at Horicon Bank can make those home remodel dreams a reality. Searching for sound financial advice? Kevin Smith of Edward Jones will help you make sense of your investments. Kevin knows the market inside and out. Nightberry Title meets all your title needs, from commercial to residential. The team at Nightberry is your partner for success. This is why you hear people say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center. You should too. Park Village Shopping Center. So we start quarter number four here at Fireman's Park in Columbus. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman, and Aiden Voigt. And as we start the fourth quarter, it is Broadhead Judah with a third and 10 from their own 24. They'll move right to left in the fourth quarter. Back to pass, back up, pump fake, throwing near side. Bagley hauls it in. And again, there was a defender right there, stride for stride. That kid is good. I mean, I tell you what, Jordan Mowbray was right there, but Bagley, is he's good. He's got good hands, good concentration. Out to the 35-yard line, gain of 11, first and 10, Broadhead Judah, as we're underway in the fourth quarter. And credit Bacup, who didn't have the opportunity to step into that throw. He actually threw that ball going backwards, a la Brett Favre. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, he put it right on the money. On first and 10, give to Matthias straight ahead. Power running up the middle across the 40. And Riley Knockreiner there for the stop, but that's a pretty decent run. As I said, power run. On first down, out to the 42-yard line, seven-yard pickup. We'll call it a second and three for Broadhead Judah. 42-nothing Columbus leads. They'll be playing in level two next week, likely at Prairie Duchesne. I have not seen a Prairie Duchesne-Clinton score, but uh, that would be a major upset of oh, Clinton. That would be that of, game. of epic proportion, I mean to tell you. <laughs> on second and three. Back up, hands it off. This is McIntyre. And boy, he had to zigzag his way for. McIntyre on the carry. Did he get he first? Yeah, he just got, he got three, yeah. 
And they mark it just across the 45, so that's enough to give them the first down, I believe. Yeah, they're, they're, they're signaling first down. I'm going to give him four because he worked so hard on that. <laughs> I mean to tell you, oh, brother, he took a he bunch of tough hits on that one play. First and ten, Broadhead Judah from their 46, and back up, back in the pocket. He pump fakes, he's in trouble, and he's sacked. And that is Connor Roach. Big loss on the play. They will mark it down. Negative 13. Yeah. Back at the 33-yard line as the 840 special is heading down the tracks on the other side of town. I have Bach up for negative 40 yards on uh, five sacks tonight by the Columbus defense. Boy, the Columbus defense, that pressure has been just relentless. Second and about 22 from the 33. Back up, and wants to throw, and dumps off a little screen. That is McIntyre, not a lot happening there. Fat, did he get anything at all? Uh, He's, Zippo. It's right near the line of scrimmage, and I don't think he got anything. Nope, on nothing. That play. Nothing. So, it'll be third and 22. Again, Colton Brunel of Columbus He's at 177 rushing yards in this game. Five more for him to tie the state's all-time career rushing record. Six to break it, and will he get a chance to do so before time expires? <laughs> They'd the, the Columbus uh, fans would love yes. to see that here on this field. Uh, I'm guessing yes. I, I think it'll happen, yeah. but, you know, we'll see. They want, they want him to get it here at home. Third and 22. Back up. Running. And dives and maybe got a yard. I'll mark him at the 34. Uh, we'll, we'll give him a yard. Fourth down, yep. Fourth down and about 21. So they give him a yard, but eight minutes and counting left. Again, we have a running clock in effect here. With a lopsided score. Just got another score in. Cedar Grove, Belgium, 28, Waterloo, 13. And here's the punt. And that was a fair catch signaled by uh -huh. Link. Yeah, if Brady Link would have ran that back for a touchdown, everyone would have been terribly disappointed. Oh, yeah, they would have. He would have had to fall on at about the six-yard line on purpose. <laughs> All right, folks, here we go. So, everybody kind of on pins and needles here. Oh, we got to get get a video of this, Mike. I would yeah. say you take the video of this, right? Well, um, so it's first and ten for Columbus at their own thirty. Again, Colton Brunel needs six yards to become Wisconsin's all-time career rushing leader. First and ten from the thirty. And the give to Brunel straight ahead. 30, 35, 40, there's the record, 45, 50, 45 and out of bounds near the 40 of Broadhead Judah. And with that run, Colton Brunel is Wisconsin's all-time career rushing leader. Breaking the record held previously by Racine Lutheran's Tyler Tenner, who finished his career with 6,932 6 yards. But Colton Brunel now in rarefied air. He is Wisconsin's all-time rushing king in a timeout and celebration. Colton has just broke the 2019 record of Travis 28-yard gain on that particular play, Mike. And this is something you do not see every day. This is special. And you think about it, folks, Colton Brunel in his freshman year, it wasn't even the main running back. His brother was. His older brother was. And that was also a shortened year due to COVID when they played games in the spring. So how good has this man been over the last couple of years? And how good has the line play been to block for him? But Colton Brunel is Wisconsin's all-time leading rusher. He is in rarefied air. 
and a great run, Mike. I mean, uh, that particular run was indicative of how uh, strong and elusive and quick the young man is. I mean, he broke the uh, through the line of scrimmage, came upon a would-be tackler, shed him off, and some 28 yards later, they brought him down. A 28-yard run into the record books with 6.20 to go in the game. And another handoff, and this is Connor Roach this time. <laughs> yeah, Colt Burnell's done, folks. He's, he's done for the night. And Roach that time on the kid. That was a nice run for Connor Roach, taking it all the way from the 42 down to the 25, 17-yard pickup. And the clock running again with six minutes to go. Well, again, this is very, very special. What a neat moment for Colton Brunel, this uh, program, this community. That is something that you just don't see a whole lot. And what an honor to be here to witness it tonight. And so great that he could do it on his home field. And here's the give to Roach. And Roach is stood up at the 25. No gain on that play. So that would fit, he'd finish the night, Brunella, at 205, correct? Tim? That's what I got. Because he had 28 yards on that run, so 205 yards in the game. And that last run was the one for the record books. Wow. 5.08 to go, second and 10, Columbus at the Broadhead, Judah 25. They lead it 42-0, Roach right side. Stiff arms a man, gets to the 20. And that was a tackle made by Eric Woodward. He's played well defensively tonight, made some big plays. But Columbus moving on and now just trying to close this one out without getting anybody hurt and just getting ready to make a trip next week out to Prairie du Chien. And the give, oh, quarterback uh, keeper here. This is Powers running right side, and he's inside the 10. Big Powers on the carry. I believe we stepped out of bounds inside the 10. So he's inside the 10. We'll check on it. Got, uh, we're going to give him 14 on that carry. Mark up in red granite says, congratulations, Colton, on the record. He just emailed us. I'll tell you what, uh, something that's uh, gone uh, a little unnoticed tonight, Mike, is the play of Peyton Powers out there. He has been absolutely outstanding handling the ball, the ball and his fakes, carrying out his fakes just beautifully. Hand off Roach, 10-5, and he is in. Touchdown, Columbus. Seven-yard run for Roach with 3.31 to go. <laughs> And that's just a little bit of icing on the cake. By the way, I just got a score update here. With 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter, Prairie Duchene leads Clinton 20 to 12. So that one a little bit closer than maybe <laughs> we thought. Well, Clinton is in the uh, Eastern Suburban. Yeah. And I was very surprised they even got in the playoffs. Extra point is up and it is good. So it is 49 to nothing. Columbus leading this game. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV. At Prairie Ridge Health, we believe that orthopedics is more than surgery. It's about getting your life back. Our collaborative team of expert surgeons, therapists, and nurses work together to get you back to feeling pain-free in your daily life. Our innovative and proven program is designed to get you from hospital to home with confidence. Find out how the Prairie Ridge Health Orthopedic Team can help you at prairieridge.health. Prairie Ridge Health accepts over 70 major insurances, including Dean. 10% off all brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokees and Compasses during the Jeep Adventure Days event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and with savings in excess of seven grand on select models, there's never been a better time to upgrade your ride. And that's not all. Fall savings are definitely in the air with 10 grand off select Ram Bighorn crew cabs while supplies last. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com.
Oh. What the heck was that? And as we come back, a little a uh, squib kick fielded by Brody Reese. 322 and counting left in this one. Well, I think these young men will uh, enjoy this tonight and uh, maybe a little bit tomorrow, but I think these guys are going back to business, Mike, come uh, practice on Monday. I think uh, Columbus with a little something to prove. Going to catch made out on the far side of the field. And was that Mr. Bagley? It was. Bagley He's been good all night long. We'll give him 11. This kid's got 118 yards gained on seven receptions tonight. It is first and 10. Broadhead Judah from the 41, back to throw Bach up, pump fake, launching it. Near side, and it is Ooh. incomplete, oh. intended for Bagley, and that was, that was, that number, number 25, two. Jack Town was the, uh, in coverage there. This backup kid, I'll tell you, you give him time, and he can throw the football accurately. He's a good player. Just a junior. He'll be back next year. Back up. Ooh. And looking for somebody Jeez. being chased. Uh -oh. And he's going to go down under a sea of black jerseys with a minute and a half left. Looks like Jesse Meyer. Whoa, we got a no reason for that. There's penalties, flags. I think that one's going to go on Columbus. About a minus, minus eight on the play. Forty-nine nothing with a minute twenty-four left. Beaver Dam trailing Slinger now thirty-one twenty-one in their game. Oh, the penalty's on uh, Broadhead Judah. I stand corrected. My apologies. Well, Tim, we witnessed hit history tonight, and. Uh, that's you can't say that all the time. Well, you know the, the thing about it is, Mike. Uh, the, the first time we did Columbus on the radio this year was um, Lodi. Correct. He was held in check that. Oh, night. he was. I mean, yes, seventy was. some yards. I forget the exact figure, but uh, you know, uh, probably about the only time in his entire grade school, junior high, and high school career that he was held below a hundred yards. But uh, tonight, boy, he came in with something to prove, no doubt about it. Here's Bacop's throw, and it is, is caught. Bagley catches Jeez. everything thrown his way, just about <laughs> as he's driven out of bounds. But again, the clock's not going to stop. We're down to uh, 70 seconds remaining. Another 17-yard gain for Bagley. Great job on that rushing record, Colton, from your cousins, Jackson and Dylan from Sullivan. Just sent us an email. This one says, uh, exciting game. Oliver the Bulldog and Cardinal fan says, it's a done deal all the way from Arizona, also home of the Cardinals. That was Ann checking in there. 33 seconds and counting left. Yeah, change of possession. It's going to be Columbus football. Now the clock, though, down to 20 seconds left. And this one will be in the books here momentarily. The old victory position. Yep. 
in the old victory formation and a knee taken by Luke Cole, and that'll do it. One second, zero. The Columbus Cardinals defeat the Broadhead Judah Cardinals. Final tonight, Columbus 49, Broadhead Judah nothing. Congratulations to Columbus as they advance to level two of the postseason. And a special shout out to running back Colton Brunel, who has become Wisconsin's career rushing leader. He now has 6,955 yards for his career. He set the all-time mark with a 28-yard run with about 6.20 left in the fourth quarter. And that breaks the old record set by Racine Lutheran's Tyler Tenner, which was 6,932 yards. Wow. History here tonight at Fireman's Park and Columbus is moving on. We'll take a break. Let's take a two minute break. We're back to wrap it up right after this on Daily Dodge TV. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. We are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. If this heat has you realizing it's time to upgrade your home's air conditioning, don't waste another minute or another dollar on wasted energy. Call Surefire today to see how much you could save with a new, high-efficiency Lennox air conditioning system. Stay cool and stay calm knowing Surefire is here for you with 24-7 customer service. Call us at 920-485-4883 or visit us online at surefireinc.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. And we welcome you back in to our broadcast. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman here on Daily Dodge TV. This game has gone final, and in this Division 5 Level 1 matchup, it was all Columbus as they knock off Broadhead Judah by the score of 49 to nothing. I'm Mike, that's Tim. Aiden Boyd is our videographer and engineer, and... Wow, history here tonight, as we said, and uh, what more can we say that we haven't already said, Tim Haldeman, about Colton Brunel, who now stands alone at the top of Wisconsin's career rushing mountain with 6,955 <laughs> 6, <laughs> career yards and counting because he's got another game next week, breaking the old record set by Tyler Tenner, which was 69-32. Mike, I'm going to uh, tell the folks back home something that was said up here in the press box, and, and I doubt if you guys uh, heard it at home, and that was the PA uh, announcer here at uh, Columbus High School, Marlon Hensler, who, of course, is an instructor and teacher at the uh, local high school here in Columbus. And, and uh, the, the one thing he said during the uh, entire hubbub, if you will, right at that very moment was the fact that uh, not only – is Colton Brunel now the uh, state all-time leading rusher in the state of Wisconsin, but he's a better student and a great kid. 
that's just so much more than football. So um, hats off to the Brunel family as a whole, everybody. It's not the easiest thing in the world to have a, a, a walking phenom uh, grow up in your family in a small town in Wisconsin. It's just not the, always the easiest thing to do. And, um, you know, congratulations to the parents, the family, for, um, you know, keeping his, uh, uh, his goals in mind all the way through his entire career um, and the community as a also uh, – uh, has just been incredibly good. And, uh, you know, Mike, you mentioned it. Hats off uh, to those guys last year, uh, you know, that were the uh, the stalwarts of the offensive line that uh, gained him uh, a gazillion yards last year. And, of course, his sophomore year as well, those, uh, those same fellas were um, just uh, absolutely incredibly good to get this young man uh, – uh, to this, to his eventual goal, but it, it's all down inside, deep inside of his gut, that uh, that this kid has the incredibly great athletic ability to get to this point in his life. Let's uh, talk about this one. Let's go a little more in depth. And Tim, maybe uh, we can talk about some individual and team stats here. Well, talk about uh, lineman Columbus tonight, just completely. Uh, took the uh, rush away for the uh, Cardinals from Broadhead Judah. I have um, seven sacks for a loss of a total of 47 yards to a, a fine quarterback in Gabe Bacup. Uh, the only other uh, <laughs> two other rushers in the program, Marcus McIntyre with two carries for six. Brody uh, Reese didn't even carry the ball tonight. Isaac Saunders, one carry for two. And Blake Matthias, five carries for 12, a negative 27 net yards rushing the football. Backup, as I mentioned, a fine quarterback, 11 for 16 through the air for a, uh, a total of 172 yards. As we mentioned numerous times, his favorite receiver tonight, Gunnar Bagley. What a fine, fine athlete He's that kid is. I tell you, Backup to Bagley, you know, sounds like a law firm, but I mean to tell you, those two kids can play football and uh, once again credit the uh, Columbus defensive line linebackers in uh, just taking uh, everything away uh, from the rest of the club they made them basically one dimensional trying to pass the football and uh, as they just absolutely could not run the football tonight. Columbus on the other side, as we mentioned uh, numerous times, uh, Colton Brunel, 28 carries for 205 yards. Peyton Powers, a couple of uh, rushes for 19 and a touchdown. Connor Roach, uh, five carries for 64. And, you know, we always talk about Connor Roach. That kid would be all conference in any school other than Columbus. <laughs> the kid can really run the, the football, and he plays a heck of a defensive uh, linebacker position as well. Just a fine football player and probably, uh, you know, citywide hasn't gotten quite the accolades that he really should. But, but every time he comes in to uh, spell uh, – uh, Colton Brunel at the end of ball games, his uh, his stats just jump out at you because he usually averages 15 plus yards a carry. So uh, hats off to that young man as well. As uh, you never know when uh, injury is going to take your star away from a football game, and uh, Connor Roach would not be a terrible alternative. I mean to tell you. Well, let's run down the scoring summary from this one. And uh, in the first quarter, with 2.45 left in the first quarter, as a matter of fact, Colton Brunel uh, with the first of his three touchdown runs in the game, a 24-yard scamper to pay dirt, extra point tacked on by Andler to make it 7-0 Columbus, and then with six seconds left in the first quarter, just a few minutes later, Connor Roach with a 35-yard touchdown run, Andler's extra point made it 14-0 Columbus, Flip ahead to the second quarter. A minute and two seconds into period number two. Brunel with his second touchdown of the game. This one was an 18-yard run. Andler's extra point tacked on to make it 21-0 Columbus. A minute and a half later, Peyton Powers threw a 27-yard touchdown pass to Brady Link. Extra point making it 28-0 Columbus. And then uh, flip ahead, 253 left in the second quarter. Peyton Powers with his second touchdown pass of the game. This one a 12-yarder 
to Mulberry. Extra point made it 35-0, and that was our score at halftime, 35-0 Columbus. We only had two scores in the second half, largely because of the running clock. With 2.28 to go in the third, Colton Brunel got the hat trick, a 10-yard touchdown run for Colton. Extra point made it 42-0 Columbus, and then with 3.31 left in the game, uh, Connor Roach, his second touchdown of the game, seven-yard run, extra point made it 49-0, and that was your final score. Again, if you're uh, uh, just joining us, Colton Brunel tonight became Wisconsin's career rushing leader. He had a 28-yard run with 6.20 left in the fourth quarter, and that gave him 205 yards on the night. He now stands at 6,955 yards for his career, and he surpassed the previous record of 6,932 career yards set by Racine Lutheran's Tyler Tenner. And counting. And counting. Yes, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, at, at least uh, three, if not four, if we can uh, make it to Camp Randall. And Mike, uh, I just touched on it briefly earlier, and I didn't uh, give the folks at home this uh, stat, and this is regarding... Uh, the sophomore quarterback from Columbus, and that's Peyton Powers. And, and I'll tell you what, in, uh, you know, we haven't seen him now for about, what, three games since uh, the loss to Lodi. Um, and, and there was uh, also uh, one major change, the Lodi game versus this game. Brady Link was injured in the Lodi game. You recall that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Rather early in the ball game. Yeah, we were here. And um, Brady Link, uh, I'll tell you what, just adds a, a huge dimension to this club. Uh, tonight he had four receptions for uh, 52 yards. He ran punts back. He uh, caught a, a touchdown pass. He just adds so much to the ball club. He was missed severely in that uh, Lodi game. Uh, I, I think Columbus is pretty much uh, at full strength as we enter the second round of the playoffs next week, Mike. Well, a great opportunity exists for people who enjoyed sports as participants or by watching a son, daughter, brother, or sister compete in high school sports. You can make significant income while giving back to the games that meant so much to you and continues to mean so much to today's student-athletes. And how do you do that? by becoming a WIAA <laughs> licensed official. It gives you folks the opportunity to get involved, stay in shape, and assist in providing the many lifelong lessons proven to be inherent in school-based sports. Now, signing up is so easy. You simply go online to WIAAWI.org and access the Officials tab to get started today. That's a message from Daily Dodge TV and the WIAA keeping the education. I'm going to add a little addendum to that, Mike. Okay. See, I knew you would. See, so though, I am a, uh, holy moly, let's see, uh, I'm on my 35th year of uh, a high school official myself doing basketball and baseball, and and uh, I, I'm, I'm on a uh, crusade, if you will, not only personally, but I, uh, my son is doing the same thing, and we're, we're trying to get, uh, we're, you know, we're trying to become part of the solution when it comes to achieving our goal of getting young people involved in officiating sports and the first thing we tell them is hey play the games just as long as you possibly can continue playing but when they're you're going to reach a point in time that uh you know your, your playing career might be over but you know um, I, one thing i tell them all the time if you become an official and, and you're going to surround yourself with a whole bunch of friends who enjoy the same uh hobbies that we do you are going to become much better at your day job and i mean this folks you're going to be better at your day job when you go out in front of uh, uh rampant uh, crazy fans you know and conduct yourself uh professionally and uh try to make uh, quick and decisive and intelligent decisions and they're not always right you know uh, we as officials uh unfortunately the way the games are played we're not always right but, uh, you know, we, we try to act like we're right. And uh, if we can uh, uh, practice that over and over and over in our hobbies, we're going to become better uh, uh, employees or uh, owners of businesses or whatever it may be. So uh, uh, I uh, will add that extra little chapter onto that, Mike. Thank you. I apologize for ranting and raving you are okay <laughs> now this is i don't know if this is a final score 
but the last update that I got was Prairie Duchesne leading Clinton 35 to 20. So uh, it would appear that Columbus is going to Prairie Duchesne as we talked about. Uh, oh, no, and now it has gone final. Beg your pardon. 42-20 Prairie Duchesne. So that is a final. Columbus next week at Prairie Duchesne. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong, but Prairie Duchesne and Broadhead played earlier in the year. Yes, they right? did. Because they come from the same league. Yeah, the same league. Right. And if you would, it just uh, it's always fun to, to check. Give us the, the score on that one. And Prairie Duchesne beat Broadhead Judah 21 nothing. Okay. So, so there you go. They have a pretty good defense. They do, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, by the sounds of it, yes. They, you don't get a number two seed by accident. Correct. I don't think, do you? Yep. No, you don't. So that is what we've got uh, coming up next week for you. And, uh, by the way, another score here, Joe Zander, Mr. Columbus, uh, <laughs> has been watching Randolph and Cribbits tonight because a buddy of his coaches with Cribbits. And it's 33-28 Cribbits leading Randolph, 756 left in the fourth quarter of that one. And I think we got all of our score updates for you that we uh, had. And uh, that's going to wrap things up. We want to thank our sponsors that made this broadcast possible. Our presenting video sponsors include Hometown Glass and Improvement and Columbus Family Dental. Tonight's game also brought to you by Prairie Ridge Health, American Packaging Corporation, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for your home, Summit Ford, Beaverdam Tire and Service and Mayville Tire and Service, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, The Dump in Cambria, and White Construction. 49 nothing. your final tonight as Columbus cruises to level two of the postseason. We'll be talking to you next week, folks, from Prairie du Chien. A little road trip. Next Friday, uh, I'm looking forward to it. On the banks of the mighty Mississippi. We're gonna, we're, we'll practically be in Iowa, won't we? <laughs> a few more, few more feet across the river, I, we'll be in Iowa. I, I, have, uh, I have umpired baseball in Iowa, okay. but I have never broadcast in Iowa. Okay. Well, I we're guess, not going. We're not I guess I'm not going to make it this time either. I guess not. That you're Rats. close. You're darn close. All right. Nice work tonight, Mike. Hey, same to you there. Buddy. Thanks, buddy. Nice to see you. And always, Aiden. Aiden. This guy over here, folks, 16 years old. Absolutely amazing. I, I just... I just shake my head every week at watching this young man gain confidence in his abilities, and I give him uh, a, a big attaboy tonight. Great job, Eden. Thank you. All right, that's going to wrap it up. we got to get out of here. They want to they want to go home. <laughs> they want to go celebrate Colton Brunel. So that's going to do it for Aiden and for Tim. Mike Tronson saying so long from Fireman's Park in Columbus. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you again next week. This has been a Daily Dodge TV Sports 